Good evening, and welcome to St. Anne's Catholic Church. I am Pam Defabaugh, your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant is Father Martin. He is assisted at the altar by Deacon Jim Adloff. This evening, we recall that evening nearly 2,000 years ago when Jesus gathered with his friends one final time before he was arrested, tried, and convicted, and put to death. Knowing he was soon to die, he took the opportunity to give them one final lesson. He washed their feet, each and every one, and changed them to do and charged them to do the same for others. As we begin the Paschal Triduum tonight, our remembrance of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, let us be nourished at the table of the Eucharist sustained in our mission to wash each other's feet so that we might be wholly attentive to our prayer and praise to god during this service we ask you to please turn off your cell phones at this time if you've not already done so please join in our entrance song on the song sheet we come to your feast please stand We place upon your table a gleaming cloth of white, the weaving of our stories, the fabric of our lives, the dreams of those before us, the ancient hope of Our needing and our nurture lie here before our eyes. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the bright and the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, good evening. I pray that everyone is doing well, and it's so good to see many of you, uh, some faces that are returning and some new faces here. We are so glad that you are here. Today's Mass is going to be in for the intentions of Ines Bailey. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned within my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. On Tuesday night of this week, Bishop Burns blessed the holy oils to be used in the celebration of the sacraments throughout the diocese. Tonight they are presented to us to be placed in our ambery. These oils signify Christ's high priestly power in the church to heal, to strengthen, and to consecrate. By the sacred anointing of the sick and the prayer of the priest, the whole church commends those who are ill to the suffering and glorified Lord, that he may raise them up and save them. And indeed, she exhorts them to contribute to the good of the people of God by freely uniting themselves to the passion and death of Christ. The oil of the catechumens gives wisdom and strength to those preparing for baptism, bringing them to a deeper understanding of the gospel and helping them to accept the challenge of Christian living. The anointing with sacred chrism, perfumed oil consecrated by the bishop signifies the gift of the Holy Spirit to the newly baptized who has become a Christian, that is, one anointed by the Holy Spirit, incorporated into Christ, who is anointed priest, prophet, and king. Glory to God in the 
God, who have called us to participate in this most holy, sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of char charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen attentively to our readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. I will 
call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing call is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? 
Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good evening, everyone. Wow, what an incredible read um, that we just had and how Jesus models the way. There's a wonderful little book that, it's not actually little, it's kind of quite lengthy, but there's a book that myself and our seminarian, uh, Kevin, have been reading over the last four or five months. It's called The Leadership Challenge, and it's by uh, James Couts and Barry uh, Pelzer. And in this book, this beautiful little book, it talks about leadership and what it means to be a leader. It said, there are five models for leadership. One, you got to model the way, inspire the vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and encourage the heart. All five of these beautiful little moments are displayed in this reading right now. Jesus loves us that he, he is the leader of ultimate leaders and he teaches us how each and every one of us is called to be a leader. Each one of us is called to be a leader. But it's a process to be a leader. It's not something that just overnight happens. It's a growth process and it's a learning process. And in every aspect of learning, there's going to be failure. But you got to get up and start again. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling these guys, these disciples today. You know, today I am going to leave you. And they don't recognize and they don't fully understand. But today I'm going to leave you. But I'm going to model for you today how I want you to live the rest of your life. As a servant to my father. I'm going to model it for you. I'm going to take off these beautiful garments that he had on. He puts on a cloth towel like an apron. And he goes down and he bathes the feet. The feet, which back then, you know, they had to walk on dirt. So you had to know that it was a little stinky, right? A little dusty. I'm just saying. I'm challenged the men that I'm about to wash their feet, you know, to have their feet polished. But hopefully, you know. Whatever God inspires that happens, happens. But he models for us what it means to be a servant. It's first a person who is going to model the way. He's never going to ask you to do something that he is not willing to do first. And that's what exactly what he does today. In our reading, he gets down on his hands and knees and washes the feet of his disciples. Right? He encourages them, right? So he inspires his shared vision of what it is that we are called to do, but to be servants, to love each other as he is loving us at this one specific moment. 
challenged the process. The disciples were challenging the process. You are not going to wash my feet. And he says, if you don't wash my feet, if I don't wash your feet, then I can't get you into heaven. And they're all like, well, then wash me completely from head to toe. He's all like, no, all I need to wash is your feet. Come on, that's it. I don't need to go to that extreme, right? He enables others to act, to say, yes, Father. Yes, Rabbi. Yes, teacher. I will allow you to wash my feet. And then finally, he says in his last last line, I encourage you all to do the same. So he encourages our hearts to model for others. The Leadership Challenge, this book that came out mm, about 20, 25 years ago, took its notes, if, if I read it right, took its notes from this reading. Because Jesus is the ultimate leader. And Jesus is our ultimate leader, and he teaches us how we are called to model the way. Brothers and sisters, today we will reenact the washing of the feet. Why? to be reminded of what we are called to do, to be his worthy servants, and how he wants us to be humble and meek. And so my brothers and sisters, as these 12 men's feet are being washed, I ask for you to pray at this specific moment, not only for these men, right, but for ourselves, that we may grow as a community of leaders those who are going to inspire others to follow in the same footsteps as our Lord. Amen?
captives bring release. Go embrace them in my name. This is my example love. As I love you. This is my example That was something, wasn't it? As, he's, as he has done, so we must do as well. Before we uh, approach the table of plenty, where we are fed with the food of eternal life, we bring forth or we bring forward our needs and the needs of all who hunger for God's presence. Let us all stand. For the church, that we will wash one another's feet in imitation of Jesus, serving those in need generously, relentlessly, and cheerfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders and organizations work to alleviate hunger around the world so that even the poorest among us have sustenance to satisfy their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the Holy Land, the spiritual home of the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faiths, that it might be a symbol to the whole world of the unity of humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have responded to Jesus' call to service by dedicating their lives to God through the priesthood or religious life, that they may be renewed in heart and soul as they serve serve God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community and for those who will be joining our community at the Easter Vigil, that we might be strengthened regularly with the food of eternal life at the table of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your only Son gave us a model to follow so that we may place service to others at the center of our lives. Help us to follow his examples as you listen to the prayers we make through the same Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated as we prepare the altar of sacrifice. Just friendly reminder of those of you who are interested, we do have collection boxes in the back for your donations if you're interested. Thank you. Precious body, Precious blood, here in bread and wine, here the Lord prepares a feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured, come share. Supper of the Lord. 
precious body, precious blood, here in bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares a feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in the mysteries for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true eternal priest who instituted the pattern of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim commanding us to make this offering as a memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us we are made strong and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us we are washed clean and so with the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with the hosts and the powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayers and petitions through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. 
that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and venerable sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for the whole Catholic Church, to be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and to govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all those holding on to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope and health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In commemoration with those memories whose venerate, who we venerate, especially with the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, as we, we ask this through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray graciously accept the oblations of your service that of your holy family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, be, therefore, Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, the, and approve these offerings in every respect. Make it a spiritual acceptance so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Come until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of Passion and the resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven. Of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kind consciousness and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice and a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command these gifts we be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through the participation at this altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and the rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants who, though sinners, 
Hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in the fellowships of your holy apostles and martyr, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellanius, Peter, Facility, Perpetua, Ag Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you have called through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ. 
May the Lord bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ body of Christ body of Christ take this wine I pour Lord bless you take this bread I break body of Christ. search your heart and remember the sacrifice I make come and fall
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we renewed by the, super, the supper of your Son in his present age, so, may, so we may enjoy this banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our Mass does not end here, as it ends on Saturday night at the Vigil. So for now, I'd ask for you all to, in just a moment, as I exit with our Lord in hand, to take a time for a moment of time of reflection, to sit and be quiet, be still here for just a moment. I'll return as soon as I repose our sacrament, our blessed sacrament over at St. Mary's, where at St. Mary's it will be open until midnight for you to come and to pray and worship with your families. Um, so it's available for you all to sit and worship and just give thanks for this time. Um, I'll be coming back into the church, and as I come back, I will read um, just a little portion from Matthew, and, um, and then we will sit in silence for just a moment as our, our families who have been chosen will remove everything from this altar. It's done reverently and silently, and it's to remind us of how we are supposed to keep ourselves free of sin and this emptiness and this longing and desiring for Christ. So I invite you all to please be with us. And uh, our choir is going to be singing a few, um, a hymn. And as soon as I get a hymn veil placed around me. Usually when you go like this, it usually happens right away. But. <laughs> My families who have been asked to remove all the articles, if you will please gently and carefully take these, uh, wa these wa oils, excuse me, and place them over here in the ambry. I greatly would appreciate it. Thank you. Hail our Savior's glorious Father. Wondrous life of words. 
day, Jesus modeled the way on how we are called to be leaders and how we, we are called to be servants of the Lord. On this night, we also remember how he will freely give up his life for us. On this night, he will be crucified. He'll be arrested and crucified. He'll be scorned and beaten and spat upon. On this night, at the agony of the garden, he drops to his knees and asks his father if this if this is the path that I'm supposed to take, if this is the chalice that I'm supposed to, that I'm supposed to endure, then let it be. That moment of questioning if this is what we are called to do, he doesn't question the Father. He knows the Father's will. He simply does it so we can understand that, yes, in the midst of our concupiscence, in the midst of our desires, we tend to choose our own will and not the Father's will. Ultimately, Jesus does exactly what the Father asks. But in the midst of that garden, he comes to his disciples and says, could you not just pray with me for one hour while I agonize? Could you not just be with me for just one moment? This night is the night in which he will be given up. This is the night that he has called us just to sit with him for just a moment. To forget all the things that we need to do in our lives and the chores and the jobs and, and the work that needs to be done and just to sit with him for just a moment. That is today. Across the street at St. Mary's, he is there waiting for you. How will you respond? good you guys are good you guys are good you guys are good